my name is Steve and my goal is to find the world's best performing anchors. Now today we're going to review my testing of this galvanized steel 21 pound Spade S60. Now it did come out at 21 pounds on my scale and the tip in this what I call the setting position came out at 8 pounds for a tip to total weight ratio of 38%. Compared to the larger Spade S100 its tip to total weight ratio is 40%, so it's a little bit heavier. And we can understand that when you scale things up and down, maybe you don't quite get the uh, ratios exact, but there is one glaring difference between the construction of these two anchors, and that is in the shank. Uh, first, let's look at the larger anchor. Uh, th this shank is constructed uh, out of three pieces of metal. It has a triangular cross section, and it is hollow. They'll do this to, uh, to, to, to keep the tip heavier. You know, if there's less weight here, then you'll have more of the weight on the tip. Helps with setting. For whatever reason, they've chosen to make this shank out of just a cutout piece of flat plate. And I can only guess why they did this, but the, presumably it's just going to be difficult to scale this welded structure down and, and end up with any significant hollow space inside. Um, it, 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 they, they got close though. Like I say, it's only 30, it's 38% where this one is 40. Uh, the anchor does set fine as you'll see in the footage. Uh, personally, I kind of like the solid shank better just because we don't have to worry about what's going on inside. Anytime you have a hollow structure, whether it's a, sh a shank or a roll bar that is open to the salt water and mud and any other corrosive, uh, we can't inspect inside here. And when we go to regalvanize, we can't prep inside here. So any, any hollow structure is probably not a lifetime item. Uh, they'll probably have corrosion at some point. But solid structures, flat plate, hey, if you keep the galvanizing on, it'll last forever. I'll mention that an appropriately sized shackle for this anchor does fit through the attach point. It's not a drop through. You have to kind of wiggle it a little bit and then it'll go in place. Once it's through though, it does not bind and you can then attach your chain in a normal manner. Uh, same story for the larger spade anchor. This one, I feel a 7 16th shackle would be most appropriate and indeed it will fit, but not initially. You need to kind of wiggle it around until you find just the right spot. Once it's through, it does not bind or jam. I'll mention that the shanks on spade anchors are removable. They, they just slide directly out. They're held in place with a single bolt that is not load bearing. And also we'll, I'll mention that the anchors are ballasted by poured lead. It's exposed to the air or water. Um, not really sure of the effect of dissimilar metals and corrosion, but in any event, when you get these anchors regalvanized, you do have to melt out the lead, galvanize, and then pour it back in when you're done. Now you may recall seeing this anchor amongst all the rest in both my cobblestone test and my soft mud test, but now I've got New, new footage in my normal protocol. That's at the Sandy Mud site where I do the deep set testing and the reversal tests. So this video, this video is going to have uh, bits from the old tests along with all the new material. Enjoy. Okay, we'll get started with my deep set testing. This is where there is no resetting involved. I just pull in one direction as hard as the boat can pull. Uh, what's going to be different about this presentation is I'm going to test and show you three different scopes and we'll compare those three, uh, see how the anchor behaves. We're starting off with the shorter of the scopes, it's 3.5 to 1, and with this mostly rope road, uh, we're going to find that the angle of the road at the anchor is uh, more than 16 degrees. It's uh, quite steep and you can see here that the chain is well up off from the bottom and as we run up through these power settings we're gonna see that the anchor never fully buries uh, I can still see the top of that shank and not only does the anchor never fully bury uh, it also never stops moving it, it keeps moving throughout this entire test right up to the 
uh, maximum pull of this boat, uh, which is about 820 pounds. I did hold each of these power settings for a full 30 second count, uh, but I've edited the footage here to keep the, the length of this video reasonable. Uh, I, I shortened it up to about 10 seconds each, except for the last uh, full power pull, you'll see I let that one run, run in its full length. So we're going to reach this anchor's uh, maximum holding power. In fact, we could argue that we already have. But we see that it never releases fully. There's never a violent, uh, you know, uprooting from the seabed. And I, I think this is a, a very, very good quality. Uh, to, to have an anchor that, that just hangs in there and keeps providing holding power, it's going to give a crew time to react. Uh, an anchor drag will sound. Uh, maybe someone will wake up and they can uh, deal with this issue. An anchor that releases abruptly, you're just gonna be on the rocks uh, far sooner. But anyway, it's, I, I don't consider this a failure. I consider 3.5 to one scope on an all rope road to be very, very short. In fact, I, I really don't recommend it. All chain in deep water, that's a different story. I, I'm happy to sleep on 3.5 to one scope, but on all rope road, uh, need, we need longer scopes. That was stuck in there really good. Okay, same test, just with longer scope. We're up to five to one, and if you do the math, the angle of pull at five to one scope is about 11 degrees above horizontal. So yeah, the 3.5 to one was over 16 degrees, so we're better than five degree shallower angle and we're going to see a dramatic difference in the way the anchor behaves. Uh, it does keep moving throughout the entire uh, pole range, right up to 820 pounds. It does keep moving, but it is far, far less. Uh, by my eye, it looked like it only moved maybe two or three anchor lengths total. We see that the anchor does become completely buried, and the chain begins to bury as well. Uh, the, the point where the camera tether is attached to the chain is about one foot away from the anchor. And we can see right about at that tether attached point is where the anchor chain becomes uh, buried as well. So really good bearing by the anchor at this scope. Note that seven or 800 pounds of pull on a boat that would be appropriate for this size anchor, say about 25 feet, um, that, that, that represents a very, very strong wind, um, perhaps near, near a, a weak hurricane strength, uh, maybe 60, maybe 70 knots of wind. So th this is really, really excellent, excellent performance. For an, for an anchor this size holding that much, that much power is, is, is remarkable. And there was no way for me to retrieve this anchor by hand. I had to belay the road in a vertical position and then give a burst of power. All right, the final deep set test is at seven to one scope, and that math works out to be an angle of pull above horizontal of just over eight degrees. And I would consider this seven to one scope appropriate for storms and very, very high, high wind violent situations. We're going to see here that the anchor really doesn't move far at all. It's only an anchor length or two, and at the final power setting, it is all motion has stopped.
and now we're at the max pull over 820 pounds and I'm gonna let this clip run for its full duration so you can scrutinize the motion or at this point the lack of it I, I just don't see anything I see this anchor completely buried not moving solid as a rock I think it's noteworthy that in spite of a fairly substantial load of mud on the fluke, the performance of the anchor did not suffer. Here's a quick look at the Spade XS60 from earlier in the year. I'm using Panope with the all chain 3 8 inch triple B road, 3.5 to 1 scope, and the anchor is either moving very slowly or not moving at all. And if we compare it to the mostly rope road at this same scope, uh, the difference is clear. The, the chain is a, is a big benefit at, let's say, up to moderate wind. Well, I think we got the picture with the deep set testing, so let's move on to the reset testing. We are still in the sandy mud bottom. We've got 3.5 to 1 scope on this mostly rope road. And I think what you can see as you watch these 10 resets is that uh, there is a glaring difference in the way an anchor resets between being pulled by rope road versus chain. Uh, that's I think that's the big the big takeaway from this. The, the anchor does fine. It, it resets every time on these and sometimes takes a little longer, sometimes shorter. But what I see is a is something interesting is when the chain uh, comes up tight after the reset, it has an upward pull, and also it unlike an all chain road, it doesn't have this sideways component to it. Um, it's hard to describe, and in a minute we're going to see the all chain resetting. Um, but I, the the bottom line is is I think I can safely say that a rope road will result in an anchor releasing rather than rotating in the seabed. Uh, I think it'll do that at a higher frequency than an all-chain road. You can see there I didn't nail the reset course perfectly. The, ch the road was starting to pull from to the side of the shank, but it didn't have much friction on the ground. There's just no weight to it, and by the time the, the tension came up on it, uh, the it was it just did another backflip and I think I think think it does a backflip on each and every one of these resets I think it's kind of odd that sometimes the anchor drags upside down for a moment or two it's not really a problem um, unlike a, an upright anchor that's dragging there's no chance that it will catch and foul on weeds so this brief period where it stays upside down, that time it didn't, that, that seemed to be upright fully. Um, I, yeah, I don't think that's a problem. Now, potentially this longer drag we're seeing here, that could be collecting weeds. I did keep the boat speed high, and sure enough, eventually it just caught, and boy, it just stops and sets immediately. Here's a situation where the anchor is upside down, and maybe just a little more tip weight would cause this to write more quickly. I also think a longer scope would tend to not have it uh, ride upside down like that. And I, don't, I don't think that's an issue. It always writes itself eventually and, and sets in a reasonable time. I think a very interesting test would be for me to conduct resets at other than 180 degrees. 
uh, maybe do a series at 150 and 120. Uh, maybe that would be a more accurate uh, set of data for determining a anchor's ability to rotate rather than release from the seabed. It would be pretty challenging for me to execute. I'm not sure how I would uh, accurately operate the boat at these precise angles. But this is this is brilliant. I've, I can show you uh, much larger anchors uh, with even all chain road that fail at this test. But this anchor passes with flying colors. Okay, quite a bit of mud on the anchor, but it did reset every time. Good. Speed S60, 3.5 to 1 scope, sandy mud. All right, so here we are with the bigger boat and the very heavy all-chain road. This is certainly a far bigger boat than you would ever use for this kind of anchor, or this size of anchor. But I thought I'd make an interesting test. And this was in the summertime. You can see I was just wearing a t-shirt there. And as a result, the water is very turbid and we're going to lose our images. But pay, pay close, close attention to this chain as it comes up on this reset. It had a sideways component to it, just from an arc sort of a shape that develops. And indeed, the anchor did not do a backflip. It stayed engaged and just rotated. There's a little shrimp of some kind on the, on the tether there. That one, it's hard to tell if it rotated or released. Uh, it did result this time in a very long drag. And we don't, I don't have any theory as to why it was taking longer to reset this time. Um, again, it is a very heavy boat and a, a very heavy chain. Uh, not a lot of shock absorption. Uh, eventually, it does, uh, it does reset, though. So not, not, a, not a complete failure. Another longish drag, but it does eventually get the job done and stops this 15,000 pound boat from several knots of boat speed. That time it might have been a backflip. It's, it's really hard to tell from all this turbidity. I'm certainly not skimping on boat speed there. It's it's really a ridiculous test. I, I fully uh, fully understand why people will discount this test as something that is almost never going to happen in the real world. But it is well, it's it's a protocol, and some anchors pass it, and some don't. And you can take that for what you want. I, I personally, I think anchors that pass it, I, I, that has to relate or correlate to some better resetting ability in the real world. Some of you may notice that in this past year of my testing, there is just a fantastic amount of sea life. And I originally attribute it to being uh, summertime, but um, even now here in November and December of 2020, I'm noticing a far greater amount of sea, sea life, and not only is it vegetation, but animals. There's just been a, a huge increase in the number of, the amount of life compared to say in 2015 and 16, when I first started doing these tests. I certainly have no explanation, uh, but it, it, it's, it's very clear to me, there's a lot more living things in this very seabed. Now I've moved over to my original sand and gravel site, and this site used to be a 
pretty good place to test, but unfortunately it now has a tremendous amount of, of these heavy weeds. And the initial set were lucky, it landed on a, on a clear spot, but on the reset it fouled completely and I, I brought up just a truly massive ball of weed. I'm not going to show it to you, uh, but set, set finer initially. Okay, this is the Spade S60. We're over at Maristone Island, the north shore of Maristone, and I'm just testing this site. I'm looking for a new seabed, looking for some cobble or larger stones. We'll see what we get. 3 to 1 scope. Sorry, 3.5 to 1 scope. All right, as stated, this is kind of a mystery seabed. I was just hunting around looking. And it's, it, I was looking for gravel at the time, but I didn't find it. What I did find is loose sand. And this could be an interesting seabed. There's, there's not nearly as much holding power as the sandy mud site. Uh, the, the anchor was, it did continue dragging. Uh, unfortunately, I had the camera tether attached low on the fluke. And the, we get the plunging camera effect going on. This is footage that you've already seen. This is my cobblestone seabed. And if you haven't seen it, go back in my video list and look for the cobblestone sort of shootout. I, I, I compare 20 anchors all at the same site. In any event, none of those anchors are fully penetrated and buried. And the light anchors really had a hard time. Uh, this one did okay. It did make some holding power and it was consistent. But uh, this, this small of an anchor in these large sort of grapefruit sized cobble it, it it really doesn't work out so you'd want to move on and find some better better seabeds if you had a small anchor and here's a few clips from my soft mud shootout video 80 pounds holding 115 pounds holding 160 pounds Inching forward, now stopped. Two hundred and twenty one pounds, inching briskly. Well, I think my tests and the footage speaks for itself. And that is that this anchor is a very fine anchor. Uh, not perfect, but, but pretty close. Uh, I'll, I'll relate something I tell my friends. Um, just half jokingly, I tell them that if Panope ever burnt or sank, and I really don't want that to happen because uh, this boat's been in my life since I was six years old and she's definitely a keeper. But if I were to lose Panope, I would build myself a new smaller boat and I would start with this anchor. I'm thinking about 25 feet, maybe 4,000 pounds. It'd be hard to beat. Okay, that's all I've got for this Spade S60 anchor. Uh, do stay tuned to my channel. There's lots coming. Uh, I know it's the middle of winter and the big boat's on the hard, but I've been busy. I have recently uh, done more complete testing on the 2.5 pound Mantis dinghy anchor. I have tested the stainless steel North Hill. I uh, gave the flying fluke anchor a try. Uh, and there's anchors coming in the mail. There's a larger Viking coming my way and also a Knox anchor. Uh, I've never seen one of those in the flesh, so that'll, that'll be exciting. Uh, big thanks to everybody who's watching and supporting. Uh, I did get a couple new Patreon members this month. Thank you very much for that. That's, that's just excellent. So as always, anchor safely. So long.